and next step is similar to uh, the previous one which we saw we we attach the policies right we create a policy we attach the policy and the policy here is give full access to s3 so we create uh, we trusted a account b uh, and then we have attached a policy which is giving full access to s3 bucket and this is how it looks like and if you see the trust relationship right in the second screenshot and the first screenshot the first screenshot talks about the permission policy what you are granting the second screenshot talks about whom do you trust right so here in this policy i am trusting this account number the account p1547 which is starting from right i trust this and then uh, the trust relationship will look like this right the trust relationship in, in the json format will look like this right if you see here the action is sts assume role so sts is nothing but a service uh, sec a secure token service right uh, that we saw so this particular service is uh, this particular action is allowed from this account so what this means is the account uh, b which is trusted can request account a and then generate temporary credentials by using sts assume role so sts assume role will help you to generate credentials or the tokens that is required for accessing the resources so here i'm trusting the account b to um, do an uh, assume role right call so um, account b right uh, so th this is which we created the account a and now in account b so account a as an admin i have trusted the account b and i've created a role everything and please make a note of the account role here um, so in the second screenshot there is something known as role arn this is a must you need to copy this or uh, somewhere uh, make a note of this because this will be helpful uh, when we go to account uh, b so now we are into account b so the person in account b wants to access the resource in the account a right so in account B, what we do is, uh, that is DevSecOps uh, account, we create a policy, right? We create a simple policy. And this policy, uh, if you see in the first, first screenshot, will look like this. So here we have effect allow. Action is STS assume role. So we are leveraging this assume role API call and resource. Resource is the role ARN. So as I mentioned in the second, uh, the previous slide in the second screenshot, we need to make a copy of this role that is created in account A, right? So the admin of the account A will create the role and will share the particular role here into account B administrator. Now the role B, uh, sorry, account B administrator, what he'll do is he'll use that ERN, the role ERN, and will write a policy to trust, right? So once he has this role created, he can attach it to any entities i am entities he can attach it to the account b admin can attach it attach this uh, sts assume policy to a user a group or any ec2 instance or any service right so this is how it works right um so similarly um here one of the ec2 instances right this is an account b so our policy in the scenario two is written in such a way that there are some s3 buckets in account a and those buckets need to be accessed in account b so here in account B, say I want to access those buckets via EC2 instances. So what I do is I spin up a uh, EC2 instance and I attach this particular role that was created. In previously we created a role, right? The account B admin. So he will attach that particular role. If you see cross account role. So this particular uh, role is something role and named it as cross account role. So this is attached to the instance. And once it is attached from EC2 instance, you can start executing commands and then run. So here, um, um, if you see, uh, I don't need to configure any credentials, nothing. All I have to do is start using by running either commands or leveraging AWS SDK within the EC2 instance, which has this role attached and start consuming S3 uh, resources. So, right. So this is how it is done. So STS on a high level summary, S3, uh, uh, STS is, basically provides temporary security credentials which can be configured to live either a short term or a long term right um, it can last long from a certain minutes to several hours right um, and there is no need for uh, what you can say hard coding any credentials um, so this is basically like a te temporary security credentials as long as the particular role that we created the cross account role which we created is is attached to the ec2 instance 
uh, as long as it is attached, the particular EC2 instance can access the uh, S3 bucket contents that are there in the other account. Right. Um, so, so here um, we can we can configure say 15 minutes uh, for an STS credentials to last long, and once that 15 minutes get over, right the security credentials the temporary credentials will expire and you no longer will be able to access in that case all we do is we leverage an api call known as sts assume uh, api call within the cli uh, command and uh, highlight the role right highlight the role for which we are requesting the sts so this will give us a new set of credentials and then we can start leveraging the same set of credentials to continue accessing uh, S3 bucket contents and the EC2 instance, right? So what are the ad advantages of consuming this IEM role and the STS service, right? Thing is, um, the from the security perspective, uh, hard coding of credentials is avoided, right? And the temporary temporary security credentials can be limited to a particular um, set of time, right? And you can revoke them as well. You can revoke. So tomorrow, if say that role is um, the, that in, that EC2 instance doesn't need access to that uh, S3 bucket in the other account, you can basically remove that role from that particular EC2 instance. That's uh, that is uh, how it is easier. So how does it work in the back end, right? I spoke about STS, STS assume role, and there is basically a STS call that will happen and a temporary credentials will be generated. How does this happen? So there is, this is how it is, right? So I've logged into that EC2 instance where I've attached that uh, cross account role. I, I'm into that machine, EC2 instance machine, and I execute this command, AWS STS assume role followed by the role ERN. As I told this particular ro role ERN is created by the account EA right account here admin and he shares with us so you enter that uh, role arn and you give some uh, this is something that is customizable you can give any session right i've just given it as a test here and right once you enter this you'll see the credentials these are temporary credentials so if you see there are access key id secret access key and session token generated for this user and start leveraging it right so well so we see okay there is a temporary credentials are generated but it has to be stored somewhere right without caching of credentials they won't be able to um, access these uh, aws resources right where are these particular credentials stored so that is where i told initially about 169 254 169 254 right so basically this particular um, instance is private to your VP, uh, vpc right private to your vpc and none of the outside uh, outside of the ec2 instance cannot be accessible so only the machine right where you generate the keys will be only able to read the metadata so the metadata will contain a lot of information like uh, uh, what are the security groups attached what are the um, eps volume uh, space all those things on top of it it will also have store security credentials here and if someone wants to access the security credential using this IP address, it's not possible. Only it is possible if the user is within the EC2 instance or in that machine. And this is a reserved IP address. So need to make a note of this. This is a reserved IP address and cannot be accessed outside the EC2 instance, right? Say there are two EC2 instance in my uh, AWS, right? Within the same account. Um, so the metadata of one EC2 instance cannot be accessed by another instance right only the particular self uh, ec2 instance can access right so uh, so this is about iam role we'll quickly jump to the uh, inline policy so inline policy is very similar to aws managed customer policies uh, very much similar but only difference is so far what whatever we have seen is something that can be applied to n number of users so when it comes to aws managed policy and customer managed policy once it is created right you create a policy say you name it as a right and that policy can be applied to any entities it can be applied to 10 users it can be applied to 10 ec2 instances within the account um, so this can be done but when it comes to inline policy this is targeted to a specific user or a group right or a particular role um, so you write a policy in a similar fashion json document with a set of instructions and you attach it it's a one-on-one -on -one relation and uh, that is the biggest difference here and the other key difference here is um, once you um, delete a particular im identity im so say today i've created an inline policy and attached it to an im user 
right and tomorrow if i delete that iem user right the policies that are the inline policies that are attached to the user will also be deleted right just make a note of this only this is applicable for inline policies if it is a aws managed or a customer managed it will not be right even if i delete user that particular policies will be there because that is there for consuming for a one to many relationship right whereas inline policy is specific to one on one policies right so the inline policy attached to that user will also be deleted right um so what are the use cases which we see right for inline policies say in a im group right when a particular user or a principal requires more access to aws resources so for example say in it right we'll consume we'll we'll assume it uh, group in it group there are say 10 users right out of 10 users um i need one of the user within that it group to have access to a uh, another s3 bucket right which is not accessible within the group right i want only one user in the group to have access permission right so in that case i can leverage inline policies so basically what i'll do is there are common policies that are common policy that is attached to the group on top of it one of the group member right one of the member in the group wants to access additional resources so i can write a separate policy specific to that user and attach it to it so only the user in the group can access and i'm not exposing that policy to any other uh, members within the same group right so that is the biggest use case uh, i've seen uh, in my experience when it comes to internet policies so let's jump to the final section uh, iam and its security right um so these are basic security concerns which um, um, anyone can take care of so uh, so all we understand in iam is there is something known as you passwords being generated for web console access user keys access keys generated for uh, programmatic access right make sure all those keys are uh, uh, managed securely right so first one is lock your aws account root root user access keys right usually what we recommend is once a aws account is created right that account is known as a root account right we basically not recommend generating programmatic keys for that um, root account the way we ask the users to consume any company if you go to any company right from google to a startup company or any company right the way they work is you create a root account and then within the root account you create IAM users, IAM groups, and then you use users and groups to manage these services, right? We we will not consume a uh, root account itself, a root account alone, right? Root account is specifically for billing purposes. When it comes to AWS billing and other uh, other uh, things like AWS organizations, other other concepts for managing the account, we consume root account right uh, and for working perspective programmatic or uh, consuming any resources we leverage iam accounts right you create users and start using it as a user you log into the iam uh, sorry aws and start consuming it second is create individual iam users that's what as i mentioned you create iam users and then grant least privilege as much as possible right say if a particular user or a ec2 machine needs access to s3 right it doesn't mean you have to give full access to the s3 understand what are the requirements say if the user needs access to a specific bucket got it if it is a specific bucket give access to only those specific bucket right rather than exposing all the buckets so make sure the least privilege concept is followed across uh, uh, the iam policy while you write the iam policies then uh, in iam password right when we generate passwords for uh, uh, web console access aws web console access make sure you you follow uh, the screen uh, so in the screenshot you can see the password policy make sure you have minimum password length followed and the combination of password contents right it should have one uppercase lowercase numbers and special special characters you also have password expiration and history enabled right so when you enable password expiration it means you every 90 days or 180 days the user needs to uh, reset his credentials right changes credentials um, and also if you enable password history it basically means our user cannot use reuse the same password which we configured which he configured uh, previously right um, so those kind of uh, security kind of things have to be taken care of. and for root accounts right root accounts and admin accounts make sure you have mfa enabled multi-factor authentication right so this can also be done if you enable mfa even if, even if the credentials are compromised somehow right the aws credentials are compromised mfa will save you from account takeover uh, issues right 
and uh, mfa is supported uh, you can leverage any google authenticator or uh, octa octa authenticator any authenticator right you can configure uh, this is one of the key uh, rotation of access keys right from a programmatic perspective or programmer perspective when you consume the access keys make sure you rotate it right if i'm consuming uh, long permanent keys make sure you rotate it every 180 days right uh, ideally 180 days and also monitor the policies right the last point monitor whatever the roles and policies that you have granted on to which principle right i don't want to grant policies or roles to someone who's outside right or uh, some other account who doesn't even need that access right so make sure you go through policies but going through policies roles manually is a cumbersome process it's something very hard to manage especially if it's a large company like say uh, 1000 users plus right it is hard you can it's literally impossible to manage those so to manage those there is something known as uh, iam access analyzer service so this is a native service to aws so what we do here is um, basically the objective of the service is once you enable the service it will monitor within your account, right? Within your AWS account, it will monitor all the policies, uh, roles, users, everything, right? It will monitor and see if it is some, if there are any policies that is granted, that are granted to another account, right? So if you see in the screenshot, right, uh, it has highlighted two findings. So we have just run an IM access analyzer and this tool has highlighted, uh, this, this tool has highlighted saying, um, there is a bucket name known as block.3vikram.tk and it is exposed to all the principles, right? So uh, uh, in my account, all users can access this particular S3 bucket. So it highlights this and says, just uh, revisit this and uh, make changes accordingly. And similarly, in the second finding, it says it's a cross account rule. So it also says uh, there is an other account, outside account, which starts from 1547 that has access to uh s3 service in your account right so review this and take actions necessarily right so from the automation perspective what we can do is we can enable this access analyzer and um yeah this is the way to do it so if any of you guys have a bit of understanding of the cloudwatch event there is something known as cloudwatch service so within the cloudwatch service we can leverage something known as event rule concept or we can even leverage event bridge so using this, what we configure is, uh, if you see the service name, um, I'm leveraging an event pattern. So the service name is access analyzer. The event type is access analyzer findings. So what this means is any findings that the, that access analyzer reports, right? I want to do something on this. So if there is a finding, I want to, uh, so here in this case, I've generated, uh, created an SNS, SNS topic. So SNS service in AWS helps you to alert or notify you, right? Notify to your email address. So I've, I have configured my personal uh, account, uh, personal email uh, address in the SNS topic and uh, set it as a target. So the target can be SNS topic or it can be even any Lambda functions running, right? So here in this case, I've, gen I've uh, pointed out SNS topic and then saved it. So what this basically does is whenever there is a access permission granted, access permissions in the sense cross account, outside my account, some resources are uh, uh, granted uh, or within my account, uh, all the users are granted, right? In that case, I'll get a notification to my email address saying so-and-so uh, um, permissions are being exposed um, and basically for our for us to review and uh, see if it is necessary or not to be given so th this so we can leverage iam access analyzer as a security tool to monitor against access permission uh, excessive permissions uh, if granted right so that's all from uh, the iam security side 